Thanks, everybody. Good morning. Um, uh, Prince Communications, I spent 20 years at what I affectionately call big, boring companies, um, where the idea of a good marketing program is whatever we did last year. Uh, didn't really work for me. Shame on me that it took me a little while to figure that out. Um, so about a year and a half ago, I'm looking for a date here on my calendar. I guess about a year and a half ago, it'll be two years in, uh, uh, in December, January, that, uh, that I started this, uh, this little venture. So um, I'll take you through a few, uh, a few slides. I'm gonna drill down into one particular part of my business, as you saw, uh, media relations uh, from the header. But you know, the, the top line is grow your business by growing your brand. We all chat about that in one form or another. Uh, and I, there are sort of three, you know, three starting points that we've all got, right? Know your audiences first. Segment, are you trying to reach clients, prospects, employees, uh, regulators, competitors, uh, financial folks, um, and, you know, so on, so on. So it's a, it's a uh, we all have more than one audience. So you've got you've to segment that and you've got to understand who you're trying to reach. The second is, is reaching your audience. Uh, and that's that, that great graphic, right, of earned, owned, paid, and shared media. Um, we all operate in this, uh, in this world in one form or another. Um, know your audience and, and reach them. So if you're only using one channel, you're probably not hitting them. Uh, depending upon who you talk to, it's either, you know, two, three, four, or five times that someone needs to see a message. Uh, if they see it through the same channel, you probably weren't as effective if, you saw, if they saw it through a few different channels. So it's the coordination between the paid side uh, that some of the folks on this call would do. I know David obviously works in, in paid media. It's social, it's LinkedIn. They'll see it in the news. Uh, they'll hear it on a podcast. They'll see you in a speaking opportunity. So um, uh, that is, uh, I just got a chat coming in. Um, that is, um, uh, you know, one of the precepts, right, is to, is to reach your audience and use multiple channels. And the third, and, uh, you know, for, forgive me here, right, perhaps capture your audience. The key to capturing your audience is, is differentiation, is unique, is bothering their eye. Uh, and so you got to figure out, right, what's going to make them a little different. So I hear the chuckles, and that's exactly the point. Um, if you're old enough like me to remember the days when, um, when ransom notes were, you know, the, the, the cutout letters of newspapers, I've seen that in PowerPoint slides. If I didn't put this in, this is the same PowerPoint presentation you saw from a PR company two weeks ago, two months ago, two years ago. Uh, you've got to do something to disrupt the eye, and that's what I try and do with my clients, uh, is figure out what makes them unique and how, are, how can we say it in a way that nobody else is saying it. And so, let, me, let me interrupt just for a sec. If anybody, yes, has any, any, if anybody has any questions or comments, put them in the chat and we'll get to them at the end. Thanks, David. Michael. Thank you. Michael, sorry, David. I meant, uh, right, uh, I was thinking uh, David Edelman. Thanks, Michael, sorry. So uh, capture your audience. Uh, you know, you have to be relevant, right? You have to be in the moment. Editors, audiences, anybody really asks, so what? What does this mean to me? Why should I pay attention to you? So here's where I'm gonna go deep in one particular area of my business and that's media relations. A client of mine is 180 intermediaries. They are an insurance broker. Uh, and as you can see there in the headline, they, they came up with a pandemic insurance. They are not an insurance company, they are a broker. So they worked with an insurance company to develop the product. It does not cover for all the obvious reasons. You can't buy insurance on a burning building. So it does not cover for claims against uh, COVID-19, uh, but it will cover for uh, future pandemics. As this strain morphs, uh, yes, those pandemics uh, you know, will be covered in the mix. What makes this different is that they are, um, uh, they are the, the pandemic insurance is pretty expensive uh, and it's meant for the, the larger companies. So we, we chose the word accessible for a couple of different reasons as you see there in the headline, it's meant for the middle market uh, and where the premium for the cost of an insurance policy for most companies for pandemic coverage starts in the, uh, in the $100,000, $125,000 range. This policy is available for $35,000. Now I'm not suggesting, you know, we can all go out and buy it. I certainly can't, but the uh, point is that they're reaching uh, a broader audience. Uh, and so you need to be relevant I took, this, uh, I took this news and we drove it out to the insurance industry. It drove it out to insurance brokers. 
which you have to understand about, about the insurance business. And again, how this, how this particular client sells, how they make money, who their audiences are, they sell this policy through other insurance brokers. So they were not interested in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal. They were not interested in reaching the end buyer, the middle market. They don't sell directly to the client. They sell through other insurance brokers. So it's an inside baseball play, an inside industry play. And so we went to, as you can see here, I'm sure, at least I, I hope for your sake, you don't read the insurer or business insurance insider or advising. If you're in the insurance industry, you do, uh, or the insurance journal. Uh, trust me, they are, they're real page turners, um, but they get read by my clients, target audiences. Uh, and so we, we uh, went deep in, in that area. There was obviously a social component to it as well. They took care of that in house. Uh, and the good news is this is, uh, this is, this slide has two emails that I got from the client. Uh, I'll let you, you know, look at it on your own, right? A lot of inquiries, interest off the charts. So that media relations effort, while you'd say, does anybody read these things anymore? Yeah, they do. Uh, especially in the business to business world, uh, the, the, the brokers are reading these publications and it goes to knowing your audience. Um, so this is a, this is a, a successful media relations campaign. They have started, uh, they've started getting submissions in the insurance business. That means that they've got incoming requests from other brokers to, to get coverage for their clients. Uh, so they are getting submissions. I don't know if they've found anything yet. This is just as of. Uh, I guess last week or so, um, but it's the point of of, um, uh, of knowing your audience, reaching your audience, and being relevant, uh, and knowing where to go in the uh, in, at least in this particular instance in the media relations world. Uh, as I showed you in the earlier slide, right? And we all use that that slide in one form or another: the integrated of earned, owned, paid, and shared. Uh, but I decided, uh, given the success that that we had just a couple of days ago, just last week. Uh, that I'd go deep today and I saw the opportunity and I wanted to share this with everybody, go deep in, in uh, showing you the media relations experience that I bring. Um, and that's, uh, that's it. So uh, if you want to share your, your, your perfect client, you still have two minutes on the first. Oh, yeah, sure. So uh, thank you for that. Yeah. My perfect client. So uh, business to business owners, mid-sized companies, really those that are trying to transform. So I was involved and I'll let you, you know, look through this slide. Uh, I'm not looking for number one, two, or three in an industry. They don't need me. They don't want me. They've got all the brand they need. Uh, I'm more looking for the small to mid-sized company, the challenger company, the, the couple of entrepreneurs who are looking to transform uh, a specific industry. Uh, and professional services uh, is obviously a, a good space for me. I spent time at, as I say, the big boring companies, uh, which I loved. I love being there. I love saying I work there. Uh, we're uh, Willis, Marsh, Accenture, and Deloitte Consulting. So, excuse me, all good places to have been. Um, um, but I'm I'm glad I'm not there anymore, and now uh, can do my own thing. Um, and I think that's I'm probably bumping up against time, Michael. So uh, uh, yeah, I will. Um, I think that's where I'll uh, where I'll net out. Great. And so we have time for um, a bunch of questions, a couple of questions. And actually, uh, in addition to some of the comments about, was that Daffy Duck or one of the ducks or something? It was. It was. Daffy Duck. So you're despicable and suffering succotash. Yeah. Um, uh, Kristen asks, what tracking tools do you use? Yeah, Kristen, great question. Um, and, and by the way, Jonathan and Larry, thank you. You sort of made my point, right, is that you got to disrupt the eye and you got to get people out of their comfort zone. Um, Kristen, great question. So I used a couple of different uh, mechanisms. The, the, the most important really is, a, is an application called TrendKite. Um, there's a, it's, a, it's a media tracking tool that allows me to put in parameters that show my client as well as their competitive set. And I can see um, share a voice over time. Um, uh, these guys are a little bit small to be using it. The, the, the universe of insurance brokers is, um, is a little bit too big to be using it. There's a lot of coverage. So if we get to, you know, uh, 10, 12%, um, uh, that would be enormous. Uh, it's really that slide that I sent to you that, that um, uh, you know, that talked about the client input. 
uh, that talked about the submissions that I use. For media tracking, yes, I use Cision, uh, you know, for the impressions. I don't have access to, to sort of a, a, you know, a Google Analytics page to know how many times, because we always put links in our press releases, so hopefully the media puts the link on their site and that drives traffic to the client's site. I don't have access to their Google Analytics, uh, their website analytics to know where their leads came from. Um, but I always ask, uh, you know, what's the result? How are you doing on, on downloads, on leads, on conversations? Because my focus is really not just on the brand. It's my first slide, right, was build your business by growing your brand. The key is to grow your business. Um, and so I try and focus on, on that third leg, right? It's the, it's the awareness, it's differentiation, and then it's growth. And I always try and make sure that I have a conversation with the client of how did this tie into your CRM system? Because I don't have access to that. But that's always on my mind. Interesting. Uh, let's see, it doesn't look like there are any other questions in the chat. Does anybody else have another question for Dan, uh, the PR expert, media relations expert? Rochelle, go for it. Rochelle, hey, yes, ma'am. Yeah, just um, if you want to think, what what would be like your 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 clients from about what a hundred million, fifty million? I mean, what what's your sweet spot? Yeah, See, you, you say you, mid-sized you, companies. Your mid-size could be my gigantic. My gigantic could be some, you know. So we, I think we got to get specific so that I could put my thinking cap on. Either how what's the revenue or how many people? Is it a yeah, company with two hundred people, four hundred, six people? I mean, like we we got to get clear on that so that I can have an image in my head. Perfect. I love that. Thank you, uh, Rochelle. Thanks for the for the. Um, I don't uh, mean to be a pain in the neck. No, 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 no. no. It's helpful not at all. Me. Not oh at all. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's a, no, no. It's a forcing question, which is great. You're right, small to mid size. Who knows what that means? There are two ways to look at it. Um, I'm going to go on the revenue side. It's a pretty broad range, anywhere from let's call it 10 million up to 150 million. It sounds like a silly range, but here's Rochelle, here's how I get to that number, or here's here's what my mindset is. I could I could show you a client that's got fifty million dollars in revenue and and pitch a program to them that is uh, that's a ten thousand dollar a month retainer, and they would say, Oh my god, you're crazy, that's way too much. And I could have a client that's got uh, that's got twelve million dollars in revenue and pitch them on that same ten thousand, say, Really, that's all this is gonna cost, and they could spend more. So there's no, there's no be real, yeah, there's no real hard and fast. I'm going to go from, from 10 million up to 150 million. The, the, the benchmark is what's their appetite to grow their brand. Um, and if you think about, you know, it, it's, so it, it's, it's, do they see the value? Are they far enough along on the marketing communications? What I like to call the marketing communications maturity spectrum that they're going to see the value. They're going to know what it requires, and they're going to have the bandwidth to, to afford a $7,500, $10,000, or $15,000 a month uh, program. If it gets bigger than that, um, it, it, it's probably outgrown me, uh, quite candidly, right? If, it's a, uh, if they're going to spend $20,000 a month, I, you know, I'll gladly take the client, uh, but that's not going to be me on my own. Um, uh, so did that, again, small to mid-size, but that's no, really I think for all of us, you know, so for example, I'm only five feet tall, but I think I'm tall. So, <laughs> so, so it's all perspective. And I think that we need to be, I mean, for myself, I need a visual. So if I walk into a company and there, you know, there's, there's 75 employees, I mean, we're starting to get a feel of what might be a fit. That's what I, that's what I think for all of us, it would be very helpful. Yeah. So, right. so uh, look, I, I don't, I don't really, you can't really tell on a uh, number of employees. Got it, Michael. You can't really tell on number of employees because it's a little bit of a misnomer. Uh, I would venture to say that if they've got 75 <laughs> people, they probably have the, the, the awareness of the need to grow their brand. Whether they've got the bandwidth, the appetite, the revenue that I can't speak to, but at 75, they've got, they're big enough that they know the value that their brand can bring to them. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Dan. Uh, that's very helpful. Again, I'm going to be uh, posting the presentation and then the introductions. Uh, so the, pre the stuff prior to the presentation I cut out, um, but everybody will be posted in the video. Um, so if uh, others want to, uh, you know, learn, see the presentation and meet some of the other people, at least see what they had to present. Um, so we have um, about 16 people. Um, 
here, uh, in addition to myself and Dan, or maybe it's 15. Uh, let's do two minutes each. Um, I'll start with uh, Kevin, you're at the top of, it's Kevin, Pia, and Rochelle are the first next three up at bat. Kevin, you're gonna start. Um, you know, tell us what you do, what your ideal client is, how you can help people, what makes you unique. And I will start it and I'll raise the, this again. <laughs> it's okay, thanks for the opportunity. Um, I'm Kevin Perlmutter, um, I'm a brand strategist and I have a company called Limbic Brand Evolution. And my business is all around helping uh, CMOs, brand leaders and business owners create stronger connections with the people that they want to reach through the power of emotion. So I'm helping them turn emotional insights into a competitive advantage. And I am using behavioral science approaches and techniques in my work to help business leaders uh, focus on what makes them unique and desirable and strengthen connections with people who they want to reach through uh, understanding what makes them tick, understanding their needs, unmet needs, frustrations, and finding intersections between what the brand is all about and what the people need. And I call that intersection uh, limbic sparks. Uh, limbic sparks happen when your audience is emotionally motivated by what you're all about. So um, I'm looking to work with um, small to medium sized companies, Rochelle to be as specific as possible for you. Um, I'm looking for, I'm typically working with brands that are um, in the, you know, the, the one to 30, $40 million revenue range. It could be an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, or it could be a small company with uh, 50, 60 employees. Um, my background is in working with much larger brands and now I'm bringing uh, that experience and expertise to smaller companies um, in a more affordable way. Wonderful, and 22 seconds to spare. Any last thoughts? Um, last thoughts are I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to meet you all. Um, just relaunched my website, limbicbrandevolution.com. It has all kinds of information about how I think, how I work, and uh, the kinds of clients that I like to work with, with Great. some case study examples. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, it's Pia, Rochelle, and then Heather. Pia, you are up. Having me, and hopefully your, your day is not as gray as it is here. It just started raining here in Queens. So, um, so I am an independent contractor. I am an IT contract negotiator. I do that on contingency. So that means if I don't save you money on your contracts, I don't get paid. Um, my customers are typically in the neighborhood of 20 to $300 million. They typically don't have sophisticated sourcing, strategic sourcing teams. Their idea of contract negotiations is saying to their vendor, hey, I need this for a better price. Well, that doesn't get you a better price necessarily. It also doesn't get you preferred terms. Um, I only look at the commercial terms. I don't look at the legal terms. So you still need a lawyer to look at your legal T's and C's. Um, but what I do is encourage my customers to negotiate um, as far as they can with their vendors and then turn over the paperwork to me. I will review it, determine if I think there might be savings. I use some tools that I've built over the years. And um, if I think there's savings, then we'll, I'll go ahead and negotiate that contract. Um, if I'm able to achieve savings, then I send over the revised uh, paperwork with the preferred pricing with uh, an invoice for my services. Um, if I don't find any savings, then you guys just buy your products and, and we're, we're, uh, we're good to go. No bill from me. I focus on anything that's technology related, hardware, software services. It could be cloud, it could be on-prem, it could be professional services to install the technology. Pretty much anything to do with technology. 12 seconds. Um, I don't have a website, it's all by design. I uh, wanna make sure that the person I'm negotiating against can't find me as an independent contractor. Thank you. And uh, if you're wondering how Pia's business relates to uh, marketing, sales, and advertising, it's pretty tangential, but uh, as we build our network, um, we're also inviting people who sell into that world and are, uh, are good networkers. Um, Pia was highly, came highly recommended, um, so I welcomed her into the group. There's a couple other people here in this group who are also not specifically sales, marketing, and, and advertising. 
Um, but uh, you'll find out who they are. Rochelle, then Heather, then Ling. Michelle. Yeah, I love what you were talking. Boy, did you pique my interest. So I would love to at some point have a conversation. So that was great. So uh, it's Rochelle Company is dynamic business growth. And I always say it's dynamic business growth and not schlep along business growth. And I look at companies to do just that. What's it take to really grow your business? And one of the areas that I do a lot of focusing on is presentation. You need to be able to present today. So when you present, I always ask, are you storytelling or are you boring telling? Did you just absolutely torture me with facts and figures that, you know, you put me to sleep. You're great if I don't want to take Somonex in the evening. Or did you just tell me such a compelling story that based on that story, I know that you are the clear and only choice. So I work with, uh, I've worked with sales teams where I've rewritten proposed, you know, their sales pitches because their pitches were all about the company. We've been in business for 30 years. We're located in Midtown Manhattan. And my response is, I don't care. And how do we reverse that so that we're client focused and not, you know, not you focused. So I've done a lot of work with that. I've, where I've written a lot of emotional, stories. I want to know, how did you pull a rabbit out of a hat? What was the extraordinary thing that you did that based on that, I'm really going to get a sense of what the company is. What's the emotion in the story? What was the challenge? Where was the pain and suffering? And, and how did you turn that around? So creating those stories is where I've done a lot of work. And right now, I think we're all in pain and suffering. And then right now, this is all a lesson. So I'm suggesting that if we are going through something right now, let's just log it. Because, you know, in a year from now, this is going to be our war story. And this is going to be how we've been extraordinary. And this is going to be how people are going to look towards us for inspiration and know-how and how to go forward. So I'd like us all to put on our warrior hats and, like, go forward and, and like, do our best. Because I think that's what we're suggesting all our other clients do. So that's a Thank little you. bit about me for the moment. Good timing. Wonderful. So we have uh, Heather, then Ling, then Jonathan Paisner. Uh, Heather, you are up. Awesome. Hi, I'm Heather Myers. I'm the CEO of Spark Number no. 9, a company I founded to help people launch new things. And what we do at Spark is uh, essentially a bit of market research in service of helping people find product market fit. We use advertising campaigns on big ad platforms like Facebook or Google to test different brand positioning or to test new product concepts and validate that positioning with different audiences. So essentially what we're doing is using uh, design and ads and creative to really find product market fit between uh, product and audience. And so we, it's a bit of creative, it's a bit of uh, quantitative and analytics um, and really helping people find their first customers. We work with very large companies like Reuters and Consumer Reports, a lot in the media space, but we also work with a lot of startups um, in the fintech space and others. And our approach is really a methodology. So it works well with both B2C customers trying to find customers for, a, a, sorry, B2C clients trying to find customers for a new product as well as B2B uh, clients who are looking to launch something new and let's say identify an audience on LinkedIn. Got another 30 seconds. Anything else you want to add? Um, no, we're really all about growth. I know most of you are as well. And so I suspect there's some overlap uh, in, the, in the types of work we do. Right, and Dan recommended that you and Kevin talk because it sounds like you do similar things. Indeed. Okay, uh, so it's uh, Ling, Jonathan Paisner, and then Kristen. So Ling, you are up. Great, thank you, Michael. Uh, hi, everyone. I am a digital marketer uh, with a specialty in, in PPC, pay-per-click marketing. Um, I have a company called Dex, uh, D-E-K-C-S dot com, uh, that help people build uh, great presentations uh, my target clients are uh, decision makers and CEO of uh, mid-sized uh, as well as ad agencies. Uh, I, you know, I help them with making the presentations look uh, sleek, uh, with visually appeal uh, elements, and uh, on top of that, I also help my clients with uh, audits that would help them stand apart from from their competition. 
um, you know, these audits are could be PPC audits, uh, it could be SEO audits, uh, you know, brand content audits. Uh, they are one one off audits with you know no commitment, so that they can um, help their clients. Uh, the way that I see my services is going to be a one on one uh, experience. I I like to work with you know decision makers uh, and let them take the credit for the work that I do. Uh, so that's that's uh, you know that's what Dex is about. And uh, I'm glad to to meet everyone here today. I know that. Rochelle, you mentioned you work on presentations and content, so maybe we can potentially work uh, something together in the future. Um, and you know, Dan, I love to hear your your work on on PR. Uh, maybe it can help you as well. Uh, so yeah, it's nice nice to be here and, and uh, glad to be a part of this group that Michael created. It's very great. Uh, and and Ling, thank you so much. Uh, Ling has come up with a couple of leads, um, particularly actually both for solo segment and I think for Signal Insights as well. Uh, signal insights primarily from her PR contacts um, that she's worked with in the past. So thank you for that. Jonathan, you are up, followed by Kristen, then Jack. Uh, hi, everybody. Nice to be a part of this discussion here. Um, it's nice to have sort of people in these related worlds, and, and maybe there'll be opportunities to you know, kind of partner with one another over time. Um, I like. Uh, I, I also look at myself as a as a brand strategist. Uh, I work in the B two B space predominantly with mid market companies um, and companies that are undergoing some kind of a change, typically where they. Uh, a run up against some brand issues. And so I help them either create or manage their corporate brand uh, in the midst of that kind of change. So maybe that's through M&A or divestiture, maybe that's a change in leadership, maybe that's a need to change uh, their position in the market um, and then work with them through that uh, predominantly in, in uh, again, in B2B markets, uh, mid-market companies across a range of industries. Uh, I do a lot of work in naming and brand architecture uh, work in, in messaging and building messaging frameworks. Uh, I've got a virtual team that we work together in, uh, in building out full on uh, brand identity packages. So uh, working with design and digital teams to, to build out brands uh, as, uh, as companies are being created or spun off or, uh, or something to that effect. Um, so my, my perfect client is, um, it's probably a company that is maybe not quite large enough to have a, a, a CMO or, 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 a, or a full baked uh, marketing organization. And so uh, I'll work directly with uh, a head of communications or with a CEO, depending on the company um, and, uh, and help them kind of build their story, who they are and what they're all about, and then bring that to market both verbally and uh, and visually either with, uh, with my own virtual team uh, or if they've got internal resources to do that as well. Uh, but good to get just a few minutes here to, to say hello and I look forward to connecting with you guys in the future. Thank you, Jonathan. Jonathan does a lot of work, as he mentioned, with the companies that are in transition, mergers, acquisitions, divestitures, where they have to sort of tweak their brand or change it all together. Um, Kristen, then Jack, then Mark. Kristen, you're up. Hi everyone, um, Jonathan, and uh, I, I like you, um, I tend to work with companies that are in the midst of a change, uh, whether that's branding, they've acquired a company, about to be acquired. Um, the traditional position has been in high tech. Um, a large part of my career was in Silicon Valley and, um, you know, the daily day was any number of who are we buying today? Who are we, what are we selling off? So it was constant change, constant, uh, I wouldn't say reinventing the wheel, but um, you know, kind of sorting through all the noise, particularly when you are a large company and people um, do tend to associate you with things that may, may or may not be passe. So kind of shining up the image a bit and um, keeping them top of mind. And it's heavy media relations, message development, corporate communications, executive communications, um, all of that. Uh, more recently with the, um, with the pandemic, I'm, I'm consulting right now and um, two clients. One is a, um, is a SaaS company that's about two years um, in the making. And um, 
um, very hopeful that they'll be kind of kind of take the wraps off of them in the next uh, three months or so. So that should be interesting. But um, again, I'm happy to be here and um, please reach out to me. I'm, I'm always open to sideline conversations. I, I, I love brainstorming and just, you know, keeping current. And, and that's, uh, that's a big part of why I'm here. So thanks. And Kristen, thank you for also, you're connecting me with your uncle, correct? I am. <laughs> this is for a solo segment. He's um, actually yes. a, a big consultant, was a former consultant um, in the energy space and uh, knows folks at uh, the big associations that have you know, millions of web, pa web pages on their sites. Yes, it, 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 will, it will happen. I, I just, uh, you know, short of hopping a plane to Texas, I, he's, he's, he's a bit of a where's Waldo at times. <laughs> so it's Jack, Mark, and then Jonathan Sroka. Um, Jack, you're up. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, Jack Chen, co-founder and CEO of a startup called Loudhaler. Uh, we think about how your smartphone can power a smarter world. We have a patented proprietary Bluetooth technology that connects your phone to other devices and to the world around you. Some of the cool things that we can do uh, right now in the COVID world is uh, contact and facility tracing. Um, but our technology, you know, sort of in the pre-COVID space and what's also coming back into uh, interest with a lot of customers is contactless payments, contactless services. So that could be, for example, for all the marketers here, uh, hyper-local proximity advertising that's based on not just your uh, GPS location, but where you are inside a building, um, you know, so like a stadium, um, convention center, uh, airport, uh, wherever you are. Um, some of the other cool things that we've been working on, in-seat ordering at a stadium so that you don't have to fight for Wi-Fi, that our Bluetooth can let you order and uh, deliver those services to you. Also things like remembering where you parked. You can kind of think of it as uh, uh, indoor 3D GPS. So guiding you not just to the parking building, but actually your actual spot. Um, our ideal customers are uh, venue owners uh, that have visitors and where they want to give them better experiences, get more data about how they move around, and thereby driving their sales. And Jack has a couple of locations already up and running, right? Yeah, so, um, you know, we've, uh, in New Orleans, uh, our two biggest cities are Columbus and uh, uh, Newport, uh, Columbus, Ohio, Newport, Rhode Island, but you know, we're open to um, uh, doing B2B sales. So we're actually working on uh, software development kits and API so that third party app developers, uh, say like a Disney, can incorporate our tech into their apps as well. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, Jack. Uh, so it's Mark, Jonathan, and Larry. Mark, you're up. Hi, this is I'm Mark Tebel. Um, I, my, I'm with a company called Growth Strategy Advisors, and what we really do is market trending. So we start out, my, my ideal client is um, a, what I'd say a five to $50 million private company. And I also do a lot of work with private equity groups and investment banks that hold portfolios. And what we do is we help these clients discover new markets, uncover market trends. I, I don't really do branding and marketing per se, but I do a lot of positioning and we do position maps and all that sort of thing. And I do both quantitative and qualitative market research, I do a ton of that advertising and mostly it's in technology. So if I have a, a group that, uh, for example, owns a technology company in the uh, casino security space, ideally they want to find somebody that can expand that either market-wise or technology-wise. And so I do a lot of that. I, I work in that area. Um, a lot of that work eventually leads to what else I do, which is basically CX. So I do a lot of CX, UX, and putting systems together, you know, that relate to marketing communication. So that's what I do. Wonderful. Um, and uh, we just had a request uh, from Pia on the chat regarding uh, somebody being locked out of their Google account for, for I guess, advertising noncompliance. If anybody can help her out or knows somebody who can help her out, she put her email uh, in the chat as well. Uh, and um, 
uh, Jason Gardner had suggested that people put their LinkedIn um, uh, in the chat. Um, so please do that. And um, uh, Michael, also, uh, uh, forgive me, uh, Pia, that, it's probably uh, David Edelman is probably, I'm guessing, I'm, uh, I don't know who else, but David can certainly help with that, I would think. Right, non compliance, yeah. Yeah, um, the, Google, the Google AdWords thing. Right. Can you send me his contact? Yeah. Thank you. I think sometimes you can resubmit your your copy too, but I'll, I'll connect after the call maybe, if you know. All right. Great. Um, so Ling, why don't you uh, reach out to Pia as well? Okay. So Jonathan Stroka, Larry Joseph, Vic, Victor Lee in that order. So, okay. Jonathan, you're up. Great. Thanks, Michael. Thanks everybody. Um, <clears throat> I am uh, in the sales business, uh, having been in early stage SaaS startups for the last 15 years or so, last 10 in marketing SaaS companies, uh, currently have not developed and hung my own consulting shingle, but uh, I've spent uh, the last couple of years working in advisory and consulting roles with early stage startups, helping on sales strategy, uh, fundraising, uh, market positioning, um, so extending that sales hat into uh, other arenas that I don't belong in, but uh, aren't really funded with uh, the zero to one million uh, steps of an organization. So uh, uh, that's the, the sandbox I like to play in uh, that phase or the one million to 10 million phase, sometimes a little bit uh, larger than that, but really helping um, organizations get their first few alpha beta clients in the door, start to grow that, that sales organization up. Um, and put structure and format around it um, and uh, get from C to A and, and A to B. Um, this network is one format that I find opportunities to work with uh, those type of companies, uh, a one on one with consulting and then, um, you know, exploring opportunities that might look more full time. Uh, to me, it's just about expanding the network, you know, seeing where I can plug in and help. And um, as you know, that, that world, everything shifts and timing is never your friend. So just getting uh, introductions and extending the conversations will lead to miraculous things. It's just a matter of about when. So always happy to follow up with anybody here or, or folks they think are intelligent or brilliant on that. And uh, I do a lot of uh, just chatting with folks. So it doesn't start with a per hour conversation. We, uh, we go from where we were able to start a relationship. Thank you. So Jonathan's one of the few people who focuses entirely on sales, um, which is sort of what I do on behalf of uh, software development firms, but I'll get to that later. So it's Larry um, and then Victor and then Jason Kramer. So Larry, you are up. Okay, hello everybody, I'm Larry Joseph. My company is Takeoff Products and I'm a longtime expert in the field of branded uh, marketing collateral, which would include promotional products, wearables, like my kind of fun hair shirt here with my logo on it, um, print, packaging, signage, uh, and actually, right now, the big hot area for us is PPE. Uh, my industry has a lot of uh, offerings in masks and sanitizers, you name it. We can, we can help you with that. Um, now, I am really interested in working with anybody who has clients or is, it, is a company that needs branded merchandise. Um, I try to be a little bit different, a little bit more creative than most of the people in this field. I mean, this is one of my self-promotion pieces. It's a... Uh, Rubik's Cube, and you know, it's, I send this out as, you know, to try and get clients. Let us help you sound, uh, let us help you solve your branding puzzle. It's just one example of, of the areas where I'm different. I'm currently working with a, a large commercial real estate firm that has 30 uh, apartment uh, buildings around uh, the Philadelphia market. Uh, I'm working with them to create an online store site. So all the managers of the various uh, units, uh, developments that they have can order branded merchandise for their unit or the company wide. How much more time do I have? Uh, <laughs> About uh, 30 seconds. I think. Okay. And while I do originally come from the custom loose leaf binder and packaging field, um, I still do that quite a bit, but that kind of took a nosedive uh, with the advent of um, iPads and everything going online. So if anybody's looking for a low tech uh, custom binder, I just uh, did a, about a, uh, uh, 20,000 uh, binders for a large furniture company who's still using uh, binder catalogs to go out around the, around the country. So that's what I'm all about. I look forward to help, helping anybody who needs it. Wonderful. And I see people are adding their LinkedIn's to the chat. Um, 
So that's great. And I believe you can save the chat to your uh, computer. So at some point, if you go to chat, I believe, and then right click, uh, save chat. So on the three dots, um, it says save chat. So at the end, before we all leave, you can save the chat and you'll have everybody's LinkedIn. Okay, it's Victor, Jason, and then Kevin, you went already, right? So it's Victor, Victor Jason, and Jason. Uh, Jason Kramer, then Jason Gardner. So Victor, you are up. All right, uh, thanks, Michael. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, so I'm Victor Lee, and our product is very simple. So I, Michael, I'll actually be able to give you some of your time back. So we, we have a product which unfortunately is perfect for the COVID times. And that is basically helping people make sure that they have a fast and a secure connection to the internet, whether you've got four kids playing, you know, video games and, or a spouse who's you know, on Zoom calls all day like we all are. So what we've essentially developed is we have a, a, we, an app that turns your phone into a modem. You connect the phone to your laptop through a charging cable and you can access the internet through your phone's data plan. So you get around Wi-Fi, which can often bog down in, re, you know, in your residence or in your neighborhood even, and it's totally secure. So we are working directly with clients who need fast and secure internet. We are talking to SaaS providers because nobody's gonna buy your SaaS service if they can't connect to the internet. And so we are talking to EMR companies who like the security, but you know, I was talking to an EMR company yesterday, the, the doctor does not have internet at his home. Uh, and, all, and he often, when he's on the road, he often has to borrow somebody else's office and their internet service. So which is not really great for security or for speed. Um, I've had some terrific conversations uh, with, with, this is a terrific group. I've had some great conversations with about a third of the folks on this call. I've gotten some excellent introductions from folks. And so anybody I haven't met so far, I'd love to talk to. And you know, let's see if we can't do some business together. Thanks, Michael. Sure, and uh, Victor is a, a great networker. He's been doing, helping small companies like this one. What's the name of the company again? Uh, our product is Fetch Pro. Fetch That's like great. your dog. Okay. Um, and uh, he's worked with a lot of startups, helping them get off the ground and, and expand outwards. Uh, Jason Kramer, you are up. Thanks, Michael. Uh, I just want to say uh, hello to everybody and some new faces. Uh, many of you I've known for well over a decade, so it's good to see uh, some of the faces I haven't spoken to in a while. Um, and I also want to commend Michael for putting together the group and thank you. Um, an outcome out of that is a partnership I've had with Keith Reynolds and his company, which I know he's not on the call today, um, but it's, it's, it's really a, a nice, friendly environment that's designed, I think, in a very meaningful way. So thanks, Michael. Uh, Jason Kramer with Cultivize. Uh, Cultivize is in the business of lead nurturing. We do not do any lead gen or marketing. Essentially, we're helping businesses connect the dots between three vital components of their business, between their data about their prospects and their customers, between their inbound and outbound marketing efforts and their sales efforts. Uh, at the end of the day, many businesses spend a lot of money on marketing without really knowing if they're getting a return on their investment. Um, I use the analogy, you wouldn't keep dumping money into a financial advisor without saying, hey, can I get a report to see if I made any money with you? Um, and that's what we help. We help businesses ensure that they are getting a return on investment on their marketing dollars. And if they're not, we're able to pinpoint where that problem and that chokehold is so that they can make changes and, and fix that problem. Um, the companies we work with are generally B2B. We do have some consumer brands as well. Um, businesses typically have a sales team that are working with us of two to 40 salespeople. Um, revenue is really a, a kind of a wide scale like Dan was mentioning before in his business. Um, but what we look at is a company that's spending typically thirty to fifty thousand dollars a year on marketing with someone else because we won't do the marketing. So if they're already putting that level of investment in their business, they surely want to be able to have a strategy and uh, tool set to make sure that they're getting a return on that investment. Um, the other piece of what we do is help give sales teams the ability to be more accountable and powerful with their time. Uh, so um, anybody that you might know that has a sales team that is looking to take the business um, up a notch um, would love an introduction there. Thank you. Yeah, and Jason is uh, really an expert as well in, in marketing automation. Um, you know, he's sort of a, a wizard in that space. It's not easy. Systems are complicated um, and uh, he's done amazing things. And last but not least, from Paris, 
We are an international group, as Jason will attest to. Jason Gardner. Hey everyone, it's Jason Gardner. I'm a photographer. I've been doing it about 15 years. I also do some video. Um, I have two areas I want to talk about. One is when I do my um, commercial work, which is split up into a lot of ad campaigns and PR campaigns and portraits and events. And I would like to tell people, because I, when I play in this, the marketing and sales world, I kind of, I'm often shooting either directly for the client or with um, an agency. And my background is that I went to Cornell uh, for marketing and, and then flipped over the client si uh, from the client side to be a photographer after five years on the, on the client side. <clears throat> so I know how to read a creative brief and create one. Um, I'm often photographing the why, not the what. Right, so it's not just show me what to photograph and I'll make it look pretty, but I kind of delve into the um, who's your audience, uh, what is, what are their motivations, what kind, you know, are they millennials, are they older, are they, you know, are we doing a, a an urban thing or a beautifully groomed thing or a photojournalistic style, and then you know what are the things that motivate them to and that connect them, what are the images that might. Um, resonate with your audience and it's also i do a lot of work for nonprofits, so you know they're kind of their audience is more donors and and telling their story and so how do i do that i do a lot of mood boards and ask the client to do the work in advance before pressing any buttons in terms of what are we going to shoot and what's it going to look like the more i can get into the mind of the client as to what images they want to produce the, the closer i can get to something that will resonate in their market and nowadays, um, when I do shoots, it's not just shooting for one thing. It's, it's often shooting for multi-platforms. So it's often driven by a new campaign, be it like a web-based campaign or email campaign. But they want to have images for all their social media platforms, for print, for brochures, et cetera, et cetera. So I have to think um, in, in multiple ways for the same shoot. So is that, is that two minutes already? You got it. Okay. Yep. Well, there I am. Well, thank you so much. It's good seeing you again. Jason was part of uh, another networking group that I had that was local, that's local, as is David Edelman, who's uh, still local. David, unfortunately, his power went out in New Jersey. Um, so he had to, he was forced to drop off. Um, I'm going to take a screenshot. So I'm going to say, everybody get ready to smile. One, <laughs> two, three. Got it. Okay. Wonderful. And um, a good thing to do before we sign off, as I mentioned, is click on chat, click on the three buttons on the bottom and hit save chat and that will save it to your, to, to your computer. I automatically get it because I'm, I'm the host. I'm also recording this and we'll post it. Um, uh, thank you all for joining. If some of you are not linked into me, I don't know. I think most of you are. If somebody is not, please link into me and to each other. Um, that's another way, obviously, of staying connected. Um, uh, there are the act; these Slack channels getting more active, which is great. Um, so please take advantage of that. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we do have now uh, the Trusted Referral Network now has a YouTube channel. There's only three videos up there. There will be four because I'm going to post this one soon. Um, think about other folks, particularly outside of the New York area, that you would recommend be part of this, uh, and any other good companies that we should. Uh, you know, bring on to represent. Um, I'm going to try to bring back um, a solo segment and signal insights to present because not everybody got to see that live. Um, they do have the videos posted, but I know that's not quite as engaging. Um, and lastly, if anybody wants to talk to me about either of those two companies that they think they've got a lead that would fit um, either of those two companies, uh, remember for solo segment, it's uh, B2B companies with very large uh, websites. It could be an association. It could be a company like John Deere. Um, uh, the association that they're currently working with is the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Uh, and then for um, uh, Signal Insights, it's uh, really any $500 million or more, mostly B2B company that wants to track their competitors. Um, their you know, showcase client, um, I would say right now, is the Toyota Material Handling, which sells forklifts. Um, and we have a lead into Verizon through one of our members, and hopefully that will progress. Um, so thank you, everyone. We are doing this again every, uh, every week, alternating between Tuesday morning at 11 and Wednesday at 5. Again, those are Eastern times. Um, so the next one's going to be um, 5 p.m. Uh, next Wednesday, and there will be notifications going out. So thank you, everyone. Great seeing you all.
Enjoy the rest of the day. Stay out of the rain. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Take Michael. Care. Thanks, Take care. Michael. Nice to meet you all. Thanks, Michael.